Hello everyone, today's topic is mock service worker and testing library and how you can use them together in order to improve your tests for React apps. Mock service worker will intercept the network request and return data that is specified in the handlers. So you wouldn't need to override the fetch method and make a custom implementation of the requests inside of the testing library. And it will be the closest thing uh, to the real request, so it will make our tests more accurate. Here is the official website, and here you will find a lot of useful information and guidelines on how to set up the MSW. And here is request.in, which I'm going to use as a fake API in order to consume data from the server. So the project that I will start with will be generated by create react app. And I will add two components in order to save time and uh, be more focused on the MSW and testing. The first one will be login form and it will uh, have two input fields. One of them will be uh, the email field and another will, another will be password. And when the value of these fields are changed, the login credentials state will be updated. When the form is submitted, we will make a post request to the uh, login API, which is this one. Inside of the body of request, we will provide login credentials, which are email and password. The response will be stored in the data variable and if we have any errors, we will store it in the error state and display the proper message. Otherwise, we will call a callback function, uh, which is called on login success. Another component will be users list and when the user is logged in, I want to display uh, the users that we get from this endpoint. So we are going to update the user state and display them in the template. And now I will just write some code in order to check if the user is logged in or not. And I will display conditionally login form or the users list. So I will store the data if the user is logged in or not in the state, which is uh, called is user logged in. And it will be false by default. I will use use state hook. Now inside of the template, I will check if the user is logged in. And if that's true, I will render a users list. Otherwise, I will display the login form in order to let user to log in. If you remember, inside of the login form, we will have a callback function on login success that will be triggered when the user is logged in successfully. And I will use that uh, function in order to update uh, the uh, is user logged in state. And we can also add a logout button that will be uh, close to the users list. And on click of this button, uh, the is user logged in should be set to false. So we will basically toggle between these two states. And uh, I will also need to wrap this uh, inside of the fragment. So I hope uh, this coding didn't take too much because uh, I also want to uh, just have a to give you a feeling of what we are going to test. And now if I type some dummy data, I will get an error, which is fine. And if you open the terminal uh, in the network tab, you will see, I will just submit again, you will see uh, in the response, uh, error says that user, not, user is not found. So I guess we will need to use the this one user in order to get a successful response and this password as well. So now we get a response and immediately after that we triggered the get users request which will return the list of users and display them uh, in the unordered list. 
So you also see the logout button and in the network tab, you can see the response. Now we are ready for writing tests. So let's get started. Uh, first, I'm going to install the MSW. So I'm using NPM, but you can also do it with yarn. And the next step will be to define mocks. So I will create a folder uh, mocks. And inside of that, I will create a file called handlers. And here you can choose which API you want to uh, mock. Uh, we want to mock the REST API. So inside of the handlers file, I will import uh, REST for MSW. And now we can specify uh, handlers for each request. So I will just copy these code snippets. And you can see that for the login and for the user requests, in this example, we will get null. So we will change that. First, let's make sure that we are using the correct URL for the handlers. So I will copy this login endpoint and paste it here. So this will be the handler for the login request. And another one for the list of users is stored inside of the users list component. So I will copy uh, it from there and paste it inside of the handlers. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, you will have an example of the handler methods. And let's go to the next step, which is integrate. I will select node integration. And now we will need to configure the server. So I will create a server.js file and add a couple of methods there. So I will need to uh, call setup server and provide the handlers. And the next step will be to update the setup tests file, which is given by the create react app. And I will copy this code snippet as well. So the setup tests will make it sure that we run server.listen before executing uh, any test and that after each one of the tests we run reset handlers in order uh, to prevent interfering with each other and when all of the tests are executed we should do the cleanup. I think this is all regarding the configuration so let's go to the test file and write our first test. So I will just remove this one and start with describe. So I would like to test the login. And the first test will be that uh, when the user is successfully login, uh, we should render the list of users. So I will use the render method to render the app component. And I will simulate the typing by calling user event and the type method. And the selector will be uh, get by placeholder text, which is in this case uh, email. And now I will specify the text that I want to type. It will be john.do at gmail.com. And another typing event for the password field. I will use the same selector, but the placeholder text will be password. And the content will be one, two, three, four, five. Now, Another event will be a click and it will be triggered on the submit button. So I will use get by role uh, selector and select the button with the name submit.
Now let's check that the logout button is displayed when the user is logged in. So I will create the expect assertion and select the logout button by uh, using the get by role selector and providing the name logout. And I will add to be in the document. So let's run the test and see what will happen. So it seems that we have few errors. So the first one is about the selector and we are unable to find the logout button, which might be because uh, the assertion uh, should be asynchronous because uh, we have an asynchronous call in our components. So I will add a wait and wait for and wrap the assertion. And I will add async in front of the test callback. Now let's see what what will be reported. So we are using get all by placeholder and we should use get by placeholder text. And now we have a network request failed, which is fine because we didn't specify a correct response for the handlers. So we will need to provide a callback function. And this function will contain three parameters, request, response, and the context. So the request is uh, basically a request object that we are making. The response should be a function that will return uh, a response for the handler and the context will be a helper function to set a status code or the body of the response. So now we want to return a response with the JSON and uh, it will contain the token and some random value. And now if I re rerun the test, uh, everything is green. So now that we check the logout button, we will also check the list of the users and that the users are displayed. But first we would need to provide a proper handler for the user's API endpoint. So I will return a response and the context will provide a JSON object, which will basically be a data of the response and it should contain a data property, which will be an array of users. So let's go to the Recress website and copy the data. So now this data should be returned and displayed inside of our uh, users list component. So let's write an assertion and I will expect that the first user is rendered and I will search for the text Michael and I will expect to find it in the document. Let's see the results of the test. We have an error and the test didn't find a text Michael. So I think we should also wrap it inside of the wait for because we have one more asynchronous call when the user is logged in. So that asynchronous call is a request to the user's uh, endpoint and now everything is fine. So instead of using this hard-coded uh, name, I will suggest to create a variable of these uh, users and make an iteration over the users and check that every user is rendered. So inside of the handlers, uh, above the handlers uh, array, I will create a variable called users data and copy this array of users.
so I will export this variable so I can use it inside of the test. I hope the Visual Studio Code will import that. And now I will run for each function and for each user I want to make sure that the username of that specific user exists in the DOM. And let's check the terminal, it works fine. Now we can also replace the hard-coded name and access the first user inside of the array. Or we can even move the whole iteration inside of the wait for. This is also fine. The case which I also want to cover with test is displaying the error message. So I will create another test and the name will be error on login will show an error message. And then I will basically copy and paste this part of the code, uh, rendering and triggering the type and click events. But I will change the email to michael.do. And now inside of the handlers, I will check for the email inside of the request body. So if the email is not equal to John Doe, at gmail.com, then I will just return a response with the status 400 and the response will be an object with an error property and it should probably have a message but that's not important that much. You can also check that property inside of the login form component and let's say that the user is not found. But in this case it might make sense to change the status but still it doesn't make uh, any difference. So now I will search for the text. Let's find it in the login form component. It is something went wrong. And it should be in the document. And I will wrap it with wait for since we have asynchronous call. And now the tests are green and the only thing that is red now is the subscribe button.